The 90s were an incredible time for Formula One. It was a time of wild technological advancements all across the grid. The cars were getting faster, more advanced, more refined, and more expensive after the turbo monsters of the late 80s were banned. It's when Formula One became modern, finally somewhat resembling what we see today. From what I've seen, the racing was okay, but the cars were incredible. Fast, small, loud, and dangerous. You had a flurry of teams and a flurry of different designs and technical freedom that allowed the engineers to do pretty much whatever they wanted. And if you were a bigger team at this time, you probably had unlimited tobacco money to do with as you please. Six Monaco Grand Prix, eight an incredible result. Smoke. This freedom in the rules for what you could and could not build led to some interesting interpretations of those rules, which led to some pretty wild technological advancements that we don't really see in racing today. From the fuels that were being used, to electronic driver aids, to innovative aero designs, to a multitude of different engine configurations all across the grid, you had it all. Of course, this variation in design meant that some teams were really, really fast, while other teams were left way far behind, but that doesn't really matter. But there was one development that never saw the light of day during an actual Formula One race, and that was what Williams brought to the track in 1993. It was so fast that it was immediately banned. But that might not be the whole story. Listen to this. Sound a little weird? That was the Williams FW15C, and it was different from any Formula One car that had ever been made before then or 30 years since. It had an automatic clutch, power steering, pneumatic valves, traction control to prevent wheel spin, ABS to prevent lockups under braking, a drive-by-wire throttle, and a whole load of sensors and computers all designed to ensure peak performance all the time. A lot of these features are commonplace in Formula 1 today, but in the 90s it was peak innovation. Williams helped push F1 into the modern era, and they were so dominant during the 1993 season that they scored twice as many points as second place McLaren. I mean, can you imagine dominance like that today? Oh wait. But all of that technology wasn't the only thing that Williams showed up with for the 1993 season, because during testing of that same year, Williams would also show up with a CVT, or a continuously variable transmission. But what's so special about a CVT, and why did it get banned? Well, Formula One cars today use an 8-speed sequential gearbox, and it can shift gears in as little as 8 milliseconds. That's crazy speed, but a CVT doesn't shift gears at all. It can just keep the engine in the perfect operating window all the time. On a modern-day CVT, like what we're used to seeing on road cars, this can be used for efficiency, but it can also have a huge performance advantage if it's used in the right circumstance. CVTs have a pretty hit-or-miss reputation. Mostly miss. Some people like them, most people don't, but they don't exactly have a stellar reputation for reliability, especially in the case of those. But 30 years ago, this was revolutionary technology. At the heart of a CVT is a pair of pulleys connected by a special belt. One pulley is connected to the engine, while the other is effectively connected to the wheels. And these pulleys can change their diameter, which in turn adjusts the gear ratio, and it does this all the time. That's the C in CVT. When the drive pulley's diameter increases and the driven pulley's diameter decreases, the gear ratio increases, which provides more speed. Conversely, when the drive pulley's diameter decreases and the driven pulley's diameter increases, the gear ratio decreases, which provides more power, or more torque. And as you can imagine, the belts have to be made out of an incredibly strong material to be able to handle all of the power that the engine is making without braking. The belts and CVTs are made out of a bunch of metal pieces held together by thin, stacked steel bands. And the pulleys are controlled via hydraulics, constantly opening and closing to maintain whatever the computer decides is the ideal gear ratio based on the engine's speed. This ability to change gear ratios on the fly without distinct shifts leads to a very smooth experience in a a very smooth and constant application of power. But that's not what Williams were interested in when they were prototyping CVTs for the FW15C. They didn't care about the smooth experience, of, of course not. They cared because the CVT would allow them to keep the engine where it's making the most power all the way throughout the entire lap. Out of slow corners or on long straights, the engine is in its ideal power band all the time. Every internal combustion engine has a speed where it's making the most power. Usually this is somewhere near the top of the rev range. Let's look at a 600cc sport bike as an example. How can these tiny engines make as much power as small family sedans? Well, a lot of that reason is because they rev really, really high, even higher than modern Formula 1 cars do. And remember that horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. These small sport bikes make all of their power at those very high revs. I remember when I first got my CBR, that first pull that I ever did where I took it all the way to red line, and went from docile to trying to rip your arms off as soon as the engine got into its power band. But every time you change gears, the engine is dropping out of that power Power band. Now imagine if you put a CVT on a sport bike, it could just stay in that power band all the time.
That would be stupid, of course, but it would be really fast. This same principle applies to Formula One cars, especially the small Renault V10 that Williams were running in the early 90s. That engine also made most of its power near the top of the rev range, so not having to run through gears would be a huge advantage. And when the team was testing the FW15C in Wales before the 1993 season took off, this revolutionary transmission would make the car so much faster that the FIA had to put their foot down and say, nope, not happening. Because they knew that there would be no way for the other teams to be able to catch up. It wouldn't even be a race. It was estimated that just the CVT alone would give Williams an edge of over a second per lap over their competitors. Some people say that it could have been as much as two, maybe even three seconds per lap. When the FIA found out about this, they quickly made clear in the form of the one regulations that a car had to use a four to seven speed gearbox. How many gears does a CVT have? One, an infinite number, one all-encompassing gear, not seven. To really nail the point home, the FIA added a subclause to that same rule, specifically banning CVT transmissions, meaning that William's fairy tale quickly came to an end. And maybe that was for the best just off of the sound alone. Instead of hearing the Renault V10 flying through the gears, you just had a constant drone as the engine sat at one RPM. Because with the CVT, you would essentially sit at redline or coast, and there was nothing in between. This obviously ruins the spectacle of racing to an extent. It's not intuitive to witness, and it definitely reduces the emotional impact of the cars. Not to mention that the CVT that Williams showed up with was very expensive to develop and build, so it would have been very challenging for the smaller teams to develop a CVT to compete all on their own. Are you smoking yet? Which would only make the gap between the fastest cars and the slowest even bigger than it already was during this era of Formula 1. There aren't really any positives to this from a sporting point of view, they just make the cars faster. And if outright speed was the only goal of Formula 1, there's a lot more than just the transmission that could make that happen. Imagine the Mercedes W11 from 2020 if they just threw out the rulebook, similar to what Porsche did with the 919 Evo after they won the World Endurance Championship. It is interesting to think about though how much further along CVT technology would be today if Formula 1 teams were allowed to develop them, but I guess we'll never know.